And of course, we want to just hear from our panelists who are here this morning. We'll be looking at other stories as well in the course of the program. We have with us Senator Kimani Matangi, who is a senator from Kiambu. We have with us also Senator Mutai Kagwe from Nyeri. Also, we have Miguna Wigana with us, who is the Nairobi governor aspirant. We're eagerly waiting also for Bonnie Halwale and Joshua Kipto, our political analyst this morning. You can chime in, hit us on Twitter, AM Live and TV, the Twitter handle, AM Live and TV, the profile name on Facebook, and 20505, our SMS portal. All right, the rush for independence yesterday was a baseline, and of course, people we saw, they really came out <coughs> in force to make sure they get their tickets and get cleared by the political uh, party's registrar's office. So we want to hear from, of course, uh, Miguna Miguna, first of all, you are, because I've seen also you've been... I'm a candidate, uh, not You're a, a candidate. Yeah, yes, yes. Ah, okay, you're a candidate. Thank, yes. thank you for the correction. Mm. But you, you, you've been crying foul as well, that the media has not recognized you as a first I've independent not been candidate. I've crying foul. I've been trying to call the media out. The media is quite biased and incompetent in Kenya. And, uh, and I say it at your studio because it is a very serious problem. The media glorifies mediocrity. The media refuses to analyze issues that affect the majority of Kenyans. The media refuses to identify public interests and those that are protecting or accentuating public interest. For instance, if you are going to talk about candidates, you would have as a media make a decision which candidates are retrogressive and which ones are not which parties uh, policies are progressive and which ones are not and then you have to align <laughs> yourself appropriately that is what is happening all over the world in europe in north america in asia the major media houses like this one make a decision the new york times for example would always make an editorial decision on where they stand vis-a-vis -vis candidates, vis-a-vis -vis political parties <laughs> running for office. This media house should not do anything different. But for instance, right now, in the presidency, for example, or the gubernatorial race mm -hmm. in Nairobi, for example, you guys just glorify splashiness. People who are uh, throwing around money, people who are uh, throwing around bling. In fact, sometimes you glorify thuggery. You think a thug or people who are thuggish are closer to the people. And you repeat this nonsense over and over again. And it is disgusting because you are not serving public interest. And at the end of the day, if you are asked, what does this media house stand for? You can't even defend it. It's like you're all over the place. There is no editorial policy that it's based on principles. Principles that will move this country forward. That is what is important. So if we are talking about uh, food prices, if we are talking about nomination, if we are talking about uh, democracy, if you are talking about human rights or devolution, you have to use the prism of your principles to determine where you stand. But how do but you just... you can't be all over. Right, well, how do you yeah. just write on assumption that we don't have any editorial policy, no, that uh, we predicate our stories well, then, all... Then, all yes. then your editorial policy is glorifying mediocrity. Mm -hmm. Mediocrity in leadership. Because it, it doesn't seem as if... If you look at your headlines, then you look at your editorials, then you look at your column, uh, the commentaries, you're all over the map, but mainly on the side of the culture of impunity. The people who have looted, the people who have perpetrated violations against human rights, those are the ones you glorify in your pages every day. So is it your assumption that yeah. then we should actually not publish this particular story? Because but we are telling the no, truth. No, no, no. You yes. publish it critically. For example, in Europe, uh, if they were to publish a news article, for example, in the just concluded election in France, you would see that Le Pen they would trace Le Pen's background in terms of their ultra-right wing mm -hmm. and racist tendencies. They would highlight that so that the public has a, a view of where these people stand. When they look at Macron, they would be able to look at his left-centrist views and vis-a-vis -vis where the country is going. But, but you can't be a mashed potato in terms of ideology and philosophy as a paper and as a media house. And this is what is happening. 
The Kenyan media is a mashed potato ideologically. No stand, no position, glorifies mediocrity, very petty. Uh, and, and then, when you have somebody like me, who is telling you what you should be doing vis-a-vis -vis these issues, you suppress him. You conceal me, you block me, you try to uh, pigeonhole me, <laughs> you call me, you call me, uh, you call me arrogant, constantly. You call me all manner of names. <clears throat> Instead of listening to what I am saying, and I'm saying the country is tired right. of this. Okay, but yes. maybe you just don't really you also keep up with maybe the rules of the, the debate. <laughs> no, no, no. I keep, you speak. Well, right now I am debating you and I'm within yeah. the role of the debate. The, and the tone and the tenor may be... The tone and the tenor is correct. You can't dictate what my tone is. But I'm not telling you the tone and tenor right now. <laughs> yes. Maybe in even the previous interviews that you've had before. No, but you, I'm trying to tell you. Very no, no, that is not correct. Mm -hmm. Because the media is compromised. For example, if I go to a debate, for instance, yes. but, but somebody else already met with the journalist, given the journalist a brown envelope, the journalist then come with uh, fake or forged dossier to, to, to spring a surprise <laughs> and try to set me up. I will deconstruct <laughs> you publicly on live television. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you off. Because that's not what we are here for. My main interest in all of this, in the discourse, all right, thank you. is to propel the public interest. All right. I am here to protect the public interest. I'm not here to please you. I'm not here to please any thug. I'm not here to glorify thank you. the all merchants right. of impunity. All right, let's hear from uh, Senator Kagwe. Good morning. Good to good see you morning. after a long while. Yes, good morning, Deba. I, 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 I think that I'll take it out from where Miguna left, and that is to... Actually, I want to correct him yes. and to say yes. that um, the media, those who work in the media, mm -hmm. don't come from mass. They, they come from Kenya. And they basically represent a, a majority of the thinking of Kenya. If you cause the mashed potatoes, a lot of Kenyans actually are in that category of mashed potatoes. Yeah, so we because, feel aggrieved. Because, because what you'll find... But the their role is different. Yeah, what yeah. you find, Deba, is that um, the society that we live in, and we were discussing that a little bit earlier with uh, my friend, my brother here, Meguna. The society we live in has, has shifted. The political landscape has shifted. Yes. We, it used to be, Deba, that when you go into a political arena, if you go back to 1963, you will go back to where Kenyans were nationalists. No money, with the kind of thuggery and the kind of thing, the kind of uh, money... Um, uh, you know, praying for money and, 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 and the kind of uh, money-led politics that is, led in, that is in Kenya today was not the case at that time. People were nationalists and believed in something. There was a difference between Kanu and Kadu. But if you come to 50 years later, first and foremost, I believe seriously that if Kenya was colonized today, <laughs> it would never be free because people would be bribed. And that would be the end of the fight against colonialism. All right? Mm -hmm. Because today, it's individual. It's individual interests. And the point is that we have become what I'm calling, or what one might consider, is a beggar nation. You see, as a politician, you are forced to become a beggar. You go to your brothers, you go to your friends, you go to where? To beg for money. The reason why you are begging for money is because those who are supposedly going to support you are themselves begging you. All right. In fact, the bar, in, even in these uh, funny so-called elections that you are hearing about, you can walk to a street corner, find a little bunch of people sitting there, and those people are waiting for somebody to give them money, never mind who. Never mind whether it's an MCA candidate. As a matter of fact, it has gotten so bad now that people wait in the streets for any big car. You know, as long as a, a black car appears somewhere, they then come out and want money. To, to somebody who is not even running for any political position. So should we force them? So until the same people who have actually made them to be uh, what they are today, and that by is doling out money. I, I, maybe, maybe we, maybe we are. But I think when, when I, what I want to go back to Miguna about is that these are the issues that the media should actually be fighting Correct. in the course of issues. Correct. That is what the media should be highlighting. What sort of society do we have when everybody has been turned into a beggar because of politics? You know, politicians are beggars themselves. The, the, the electorate are beggars. You know, everybody is begging from everybody. 
you know what sort of nation uh, do we have but is, and, and let and let's not mistake this to be a question of poverty it has nothing to do with poverty it has something to do with a culture of greed you know and a culture of um, of begging, really. All right, but is, isn't that also the brand of politics that actually you brought to the fore in this country, where we want to give the Wanainchi, you know, not what the services they, they deserve as Wanainchi, but we want to actually drop them in drips and drabs so that we may be coming to the politicians year in, year out. You know, you know the bomb. You know the bomb. You, you cannot, the public cannot escape responsibility. You know, you cannot es escape responsibility. And it is true that people do get the leadership that they deserve. Let's, let's, let's start from there. Let's not kid ourselves. Because the minute you start saying it is only an individual, an excuse away everybody else, an excuse away everybody who is begging, even somebody driving a BMW, we will stop in front of Kalwale's office and we will want at the time he is leaving to be given a thousand shillings. Right. Let's, right? Say, right. Let's say from Honorable uh, Kimani Mwatangi. Good morning, sir. Morning, morning, Adibal. Uh, I, I thought the, the headline that you read was on uh, the independent candidates. Yes. And uh, that was the debate. Or did we shift it to the conduct of the media? It is uh, degenerated <laughs> into the conduct of the media, but of course, we shall be discussing <laughs> that as well. Yes. Right? So, 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 I mean, uh, well, uh, let me say first on the question of independent candidates that, uh, that indeed uh, there's a massive number. That's a massive number. And, um, and, and when we were changing the <laughs> electoral <laughs> law to, to stop party hoping uh, with the... Uh, intention then that, that it was going to promote democracy. I think one of the one of the areas that was forgotten was that this window was still open. And that is why you find that now uh, there are more candidates who are running as independents, probably more than who are running in, in uh, political parties. If actually all of them were to be given tickets, the ones who were seeking uh, to run as independents, I think they would uh, outnumber the ones who have been nominated in political parties. And um, and, and, and that, that, that tells you <coughs> that uh, in the quest to reform our democracy uh, and if the way to follow was to discourage party hoping legislatively, then, then that law needed to have looked wider and deeper into that, into that issue. And, and, and then coming then to the culture that we have in our politics and especially the the effect of the outcome of an election or the process itself with the introduction of, of money and resources, as my colleagues have said, well, it's a major determinant. And, and it is a creation of politicians themselves. It's not, it's not the media, in my view, that have created this scenario. Mm -hmm. And it is continued, it is, it is fertilized to continue by politicians. And, and I would tell you what happens in my own experience is that once you find, for example, uh, Mutahi Kagwe, well, he has a record, but he was running for governor, and uh, I've just asked him, he told me he didn't, he didn't uh, go as an independent, and he's my good friend. Wish you well, I'm sure and you... I'm, and I'm not going independent. Uh, and, and I'm sure probably he'll be taking a shot at it next time. <laughs> and, and he would have made a very good governor for the people of Nyeri, that one I'm sure about. <laughs> and uh, uh, my friend Miguna is also running as an in independent for, for Nairobi, also wish him well. And, but you find that probably if Miguna got the opportunity to be the governor for Nairobi and for the next five years. And I'm going to get that. Fine. And, and for the next five years, he's the, next, he's the governor. Yeah. And in 2022, he has to defend his seat in Not Nairobi. I'm only I, and I would, I would tell you that probably that policy would have shifted. No, <laughs> because, no, no. I'm because, declaring it live. Be, because at that time, the interest <laughs> defense are so high. No, you know, five years. Be, because... What really happens uh, most of the time is that politicians weigh selfishly what their interests are against the public good. And, and, and if there was anyone to blame for this, the continuation of this culture, for the degeneration of, of, of our politics and democracy, it would be the politicians. And so uh, whatever view the media has taken, and, and, and uh, partly I would concur with them that... Um, the media needs to be critical of, of, of both ends, you know, that, that is, Thank you know, how politicians conduct themselves and also how the, those that are not well oiled or money, those ones that stand for principle, 
you know, and ha how they conduct their campaigns, right. and then draw a line between the two. Right. So, so, so uh, inevitably, inevitably, our politics are going to continue. Is going to continue the way it is for quite a while because in a hundred percent of all politicians, ninety-eight percent of them use that same same formula. If you ask uh, Halwale when he's uh, campaigning Thank you. in uh, in uh, Kakamega, whether he's going to be needing funds. Uh, to buy tea for his boys as they go for bullfighting and they go to Bukungu Stadium, he will be needing it and he will be using it. All right, let, let's hear from him, uh, from Boni Kalole himself. Sorry, I, I, I came in late and I hope I will end at the right angle. But basically, uh, there are three things. The first one is that uh, this uh, huge number of independent candidates yes. is an indictment on the process of nominations within political parties. It failed across the board. Mm. People were not treated well, so people know that they have the people on the ground with them, but they have been denied an opportunity to run. So they have to go somewhere, and the only safety valve was being independent candidate. The second point is, uh, where did the rain start beating us on this particular manner? It came when one, Honorable Duale, in his usual loud and shrill voice, uh, moved uh, a motion that was attempted, or attempting to help Jubilee to become a monolith. We told him that uh, because of the multi-party democracy that so many Kenyans fought for, moving back to a monolith was retrogressive. Mm -hmm. They couldn't listen. This is what you're seeing, and today I, I I get really amused when I see President Uhuru uh, being supported by five parties in his presidential bid after he had been the one saying, I am saying that for us to succeed as a one nation, togetherness, we must only have one party, Jubilee. They even told Raila to join Jubilee. The last point that I would like to make is where do we go from here? Uh, after the elections, we have to rethink the so-called the party hoping law. We have to rethink it as parliament so that it is properly grafted. People must have space because strong political parties is strong, uh, better democracy and hopefully better parliament. All right, but maybe we are having also the rush of uh, independence because uh, we, they cannot subscribe to the ideologies and uh, the principles of these particular parties, which is uh, maybe wanting. They've seen maybe Miguna Miguna, he says he's been the, the first independent. You looked at all these political parties and you thought there, no. there is no ideology. There, there, yes, there, 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 there is, is no ideology, there is no, there, yes? There is no party in Kenya. There is no political party in Kenya. Uh, parties ought to be based on specific philosophies and ideologies. And if you look at uh, my friend, <laughs> uh, Monica Luale is a party, uh, Ford Kenya, and you compared Ford Kenya to ODM, and you compared ODM now to Jubilee, and you compare Jubilee to the uh, WIPA or ANC, they're the same. Mm. These parties are basically the same. When you listen to their leaders, there is nothing they're saying which is different. Even on the, you see, when you listen to leaders, political leaders, when they talk about, say, for example, employment, or they talk about health care. Their philosophy and ideology should be able to distinguish what their view <coughs> with respect to these issues are. These ones are not. These are just empty vessels for the purposes of getting political power. And when you listen to Mr. the Honorable <coughs> Gangula, when he was speaking at the NASA launch, when they were launching the presidential, uh, their presidential candidate, it was a horrible speech. He said, look, this is a cow. Uh, in my culture, this cow uh, has to be slaughtered and it has to be shared. And we have to know who is taking the leg, who is taking the hind leg, the foreleg, who is taking the ribs and the tail. And he said, that is what we have done. We have finished that. So for him, public service is about eating. It's about slaughtering a cow and dividing it up amongst themselves. It's not, it's not about responsibility. It's not about public service. It's not about devolution and delivery of services. And this is what it's supposed to be. So when I looked at them, and knowing, because I've been an insider, knowing how they operated, I knew, number one, they would rig me out. 
Uh, number two, they would not tolerate uh, free expression, free conscience, and uh, they would not uh, be democratic in the way they conducted their nominations. And I've been vindicated because at the end of the day now, I have 5,000 you know, compatriots that I can actually lead into a political party called the Independent Party of Kenya, maybe the Revolutionary Independent Party of Kenya, with me as their presidential candidate because I started it. But I am only running as governor of Nairobi. But, but I wanted to come back. I know my friend is yet to jump in. But I wanted to come back to the issue that you raised. And I want to go to Honorable uh, Wamatangi's uh, point. Uh, he's saying the media is just a reflection. Well, my friend uh, Mutai, Mutai Kagwe said uh, the, the media is a reflection of society. And uh, Honorable Wamatangi said that uh, the, media is not, the media is not at fault with respect to this issue. But the media, you know, the media is like a profession, like the legal profession. Yes. You are not just there uh, as ventilators. You are not just there as spectators. You are not just there to watch and simply be <coughs> what you are watching forward. You filter, you digest. And when you speak, you have to align yourself on the side of the, the, the best interest of the majority of the people. Thank you. And so what I'm saying is this. If we were here and Miguna was a drug dealer, it is the responsibility, in fact a positive duty, of the responsibility to challenge Miguna on his drug dealing uh, shenanigans. Thank you. But you can't gloss over that and present all of us and then call somebody who's a drug dealer flamboyant. <laughs> you can't do that. You call, oh, this is flamboyant, or oh, he's charismatic. He's not charismatic. He's, he's simply <laughs> demonstrating the underworld uh, but business he, of getting illicit wealth and splashing at you. And these people have to be deconstructed. We can't have a All society right. that you. is led But it's not by also criminals. the responsibility of the media to play the judge, the, 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 the prosecutor, and the hangman. It's actually if, the responsibility if the matter of the maybe is not very clear and it's no, still no, in no, court. No, 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 no. All right. The Hold media the... plays a more central role Thank than you. even the opposition. Thank you. Let, let's hear from Joshua yes. Kipto. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Thank, um, thank you so much. I think I stepped in late. But two things that I can pick out quickly, maybe on the issue of independent parties or the independent candidates. Uh, 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 the number being uh, big as it is, it's simply because it being a testament of the failure of our parties. Miguna is right to the extent that our parties have yet to assume their true nature. What a party should be should be a conglomerate of individuals. Individuals come up with aspirations and issues and ideology, but that is not the case. Our parties are personality based in the sense that one person dictates about the party. In um, you can't talk of ODM and divorce it from Raila, for example. You can't talk of Jubilee and divorce it from the president and the deputy president. So they are more individual based. So when you look at the number of independent candidates, it's more or less like a vindication of the fact that the parties have failed to mature, they have failed to grow. Despite the political parties uh, act coming up and the issue of funding coming up, the idea was we wanted to institutionalize, but that has been a tragic failure. Secondly, when it comes to nomination, again, parties <coughs> failed across board. And I think the beauty is that at the moment each of the party acknowledges, every political player acknowledges that political parties seem to lack capacity to do. Yesterday I was in the political parties tribunal and we sat, we left there at around 11.30. And I, uh, by the time I was leaving, there were so many other people still waiting to be heard. That just shows you the kind of mess that we experience during the, um, during the party nominations. Now, that can only change. I wouldn't advocate what Bonnie Halwale would say, that we revisit the party hoping bill. <laughs> but rather, I would say, it is good we go through such birth pains in order to have strengthened parties. Simply because we are now freeing Kenyans. Previously, there was no option. The only option was, if I lose in ODM, I quickly buy a ticket from FDR. Now that that has been closed, the only option is independent. And parties are therefore learning that if they don't put their house in order, if they don't put in a popular candidate, the net effect is that members move. And if you look at the numbers of the independence even if we get 40 mps out of that mm -hmm. if we get four governors out of that yes. if we get 10 senators out of that the message would have sunk into political parties and that is a lesson we need so that going into the next election parties start preparing early and you know we have this problem i think with the voter or the citizen they are tied to the party at the expense of good choices in the in the sense that 
they would choose to forfeit a good leader who they appreciate, who they would have supported, but for the party ticket. So if independents can win, that narrative changes. In what way? The voter realizes that it doesn't <coughs> matter. Even if my preferred candidate is rigged out of party nomination, I can still follow the same person and vote as an independent. Do you think the parties will be blind to that fact? No. Next time going to the nominations, they'll be so sure that they mess up the party nominations, the end result is that people will go independent and their members will... That is a very brilliant argument. Now, but let me tell you, yes. it is academic. Academic to the extent that after elections, yes. where do we go from there? We are supposed to run government. The president can only run government with members of his party who have won. So if you have a parliament whose majority is the independent, you can very well expect that a vote of no confidence will be passed in the parliament. But the, the independents can't be more than 30 or 40, so we can't talk about the majority. Who told you? Secondly, uh, are, uh, secondly Miguna is, Miguna is, are you saying he's going to lose? No, you I'm not saying he's going to lose, but you know, we we'll talk about majority. 290, how many are you talking about? You, you know, secondly, quickly, uh, quickly, uh, just to finish. Yes, secondly, majority. quickly to finish on that. <laughs> Why again do we want to make the legislature an appendage of the executive? That has been disaster for the last four years. Why do we have a problem with the current legislature? Because they take instructions from the legislature, whatever from the executive. We are not having an independent legislature. So we shouldn't compare and say, now that we may have independent <coughs> having more <coughs> numbers in parliament, why are we having more independence? It is because the political parties failed. It's a fact. Then quickly, on the begging culture, because I picked Honda um, Bamutai Kagwe saying that it is two ways starting from the citizenship he aptly captured well that it started with independence but let's focus on solution all of us agree that there is a problem if Miguna is to campaign right now if he for example comes to my neighborhood they'll wait for him they'll ask him for money in fact to be specific once he's out of the place they would ask is there any, any other new aspirant along the way who we can also extort how do we get a solution for that? A solution for every country lies with its leadership, not with the citizens. The citizens need to be inspired and motivated. Who can bring that change? It is the leadership. For example, I can use one key example that I've seen in my lifetime. In 2007, my constituency, Aldai constituency, voted for former, uh, it, or she was the former head of civil service as well as a cabinet minister, Honorable Sali Kosge. And this is a moneyed individual. This is a person who can afford to buy votes, she won fairly in ODM. And when she came in in 2008, January, the culture in my constituency was purely that of begging. It is a question of who gives the most. For the last 30, 40 years, even before I was born, by the time I was now where I was in 2008, every adult will tell you in this constituency, you don't get it unless you bribe. She didn't bribe. And when she came in, she made it clear. She said, I was given a mandate purely to emancipate you people. She did so much that by 2010, it was impossible for anyone to fathom going to Honorable Sali Kosge and ask for steep. It was impossible. In fact, she would come, she would make it clear. In 2013, she lost possibly because of the party primaries, but she lost very closely. She lost by around 2,000 votes. In these elections, the same voters were begging her to come by. Why is that? Because she set a trend and the voters saw what she could do. So that tells you the change can be. And the change can come from the but, leadership. Right. We only need two or three to but start the, the process. Okay. Uh, uh, let, let, let's say for more about Matai Kabe because uh, <laughs> we, we, you know, you know, we'll come to you, sir. Yeah, this this yeah. nomination we'll process. Welcome we'll to you, sir. The, the, let's go back to the nomination process yes. and the relationship between nomination process and the party ideology. You know, in civilized nations, what would normally happen is that a political party identifies individuals who, in their thinking, align themselves with the party policy, exactly. with the party ideology, with the party thinking, so that when you are in parliament, you represent the thinking of the party. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's the beginning of making of the making of political parties based on ideology and philosophies. Now, unfortunately, what is happening in this country is this. Yes. First of all, there is nothing like a, a, a nomination process. It is not a nomination process. It is not an election. Let's get away from that. Or the, whether it was ODM or whether it was Jubilee, let us accept that it was just a, a symbol of inefficiency. You know, mm -hmm. the whole process. It was not deliberate. It was it, whether deliberate. <laughs> you know, some people are rigged out deliberately. I mean, we had situations where, you know, the bar, in my constituency, in Nyeri, in Mukroini constituency, yes. in my stronghold of, uh, of Nyeri, there were no ballot papers until 6 p.m. Six in the evening in Mukroini West. 
All right? And you keep on calling the Secretary General and asking, where are the ballot papers for this area? Why is it such a coincidence that in my stronghold mm -hmm. and in the stronghold of my so of my of, of who was going to be my deputy governor, there are no ballot papers? Mm -hmm. What kind of coincidence is this? Mm -hmm. You're told, oh, we'll get back to you. That's the end of it. And and you don't have to be instant, you know, to realize that there is a rigging process going on. Mm -hmm. So w what I'm trying to say is this, and and you know, it is not one place. It is not two places. And that is why we have got so many independent candidates. Because they felt that they were differentiated from, you know, from, from, from being the representative of the people as they should have been. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to say is this. I think going forward, we need to really look at the whole philosophy of political parties and who represents them in parliament. But, but because, yes. because, Diba, if you have a situation where people go and vote with a voters, not with a voters card, with an identity card, you go and vote with an identity card, what I would do is if I was going against, um, against uh, Bonne Kalwale in the, main, in the main elections, the opposition against Bonne Kalwale would go and vote uh, for the weakest candidate in his party so that that is a candidate I face in the elections in, 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 in August. Now, the second thing that was happening in this election, people were voting two times, three times, ten times. There is a guy who bragged that he voted 27 times. <laughs> now, uh, what, what nonsense is this? You know, this is just a farce. This is not an election. Mm -hmm. Let's face it. And let's move on to say that we did not have proper nominations in any party. Let's, first move, let's ask ourselves, what then should we do in the future so that the primary nomination process is one that is representative. Don't lie to people. It is better. I'd rather even have the direct nominations that were done by ODM. I'd rather have those. Because at least you're not pretending that you're carrying out a democratic process. You're simply saying, this is a person who is going to represent us. If you like it, vote for him or her. If you don't, go to another party. But we I'd have, rather have a decision well, like that. We, it seems we have a very systemic issue or uh, at hand here with the political parties as well because even when you talk about ideologies and policies and we have uh, the same people like hoping from one party to another with the same 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 mind concept then how will you bring change because it is the same same mind. That is where you come in as the media. Right? That's where you come in Okay, we'll come to you. Let's hear from Honorable Wamatangi. Yeah, yeah. you see, Dibal, I wanted to I wanted to actually revisit that issue of is it our political party's failure or is it the culture that we have? And I'll tell you one thing. Out of those 4,000 people who are reported there, 3,999 other than Miguna, who is here, were in other political parties. And then after failing in the political parties, they went to be independents. So the question you would first need to ask yourself is, is it that they didn't know before they joined the political parties, the nature, the culture, the type of elections, or the, the faith they had in those political parties? And I would tell you, fast forward, what really happens and why you would judge why. You see, in this country, we have a culture where everybody thinks, and I'll tell you, majority of those running for office, they don't have a plan, they don't have a manifesto, they don't have political ambitions, they don't even have the political acumen, but it is believed that when you run for political office, it is a, sh it's a shortcut to making money. And you can see this in the later effect. Ask yourself, how many times do you send your journalist to parliament and you beam into the house and you find that in a house of 350, there are only five members sitting, five. <laughs> You will find that in the house of, of, of 67, you have five people in the house throughout. Throughout. So you ask yourself, all these, all these people who are fighting to go to parliament, where are they when parliament uh, kicks off? Secondly, do an audit of every member of parliament who has been in this session, the top of parliament, and ask each one of them, one by one, how many times did you contribute to a motion in Parliament or to debate in Parliament? You will be surprised that more than 80% of them will not tell you they spoke in Parliament probably more than five times. There are some who have, as we close Parliament, never spoken. Mm -hmm. Lastly, ask any of do an audit and ask all of them, out of all of you, almost 500 members, how many bills did you sponsor to Parliament? Or even not even bills. Correct. How many motions? A motion <laughs> to discuss. How many have you sponsored? Zero. Nothing. But then <coughs> turn the reverse side and ask the same 500 members, how many trips have you made to the US? 
20. You'll be surprised that every single member has traveled within the year more than five times. That is the story. So that when you see this rush of 400, 4,000 people running to, 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 to jump and, and, and try to bid as independents once they have tried all maneuvers in political parties, where they failed, where they failed. And although Motohikagu says, and I have no reason to want to contest with him on how the elections were in Nyeri, I verily believe that in the process of nominations personally that I have seen before and I have participated in three now, nominations have been an extremely chaotic process with violence and stealing. Mm -hmm. but, but at least this <coughs> time, the bar was raised. The practice was fairly close to what you would want to see in a nomination process. In Kiambu. And, in and, Kiambu. And, 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 and I'm speaking in Kiambu. Yeah, yeah. I was in Kiambu. Yes. And, and, and so I would not say that, that I would be justified to support that out of every single person, save for Motahi Kagwe, who lost, they have run to, 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 to get tickets as independents. The belief that but, most of them have is this, but we, that if you find your way to that house, you are most likely to be economically better off. You are going to be earning more. You have more chances of traveling around the world. You have more chances of, of, of earning an allowance, not knowing that the reverse is true. For true legislators, for people who burn the midnight oil and apply themselves to change the law in this country, like Mutahi Kagu, like Boni Halwale, like Imani Matangi, you will find that when you go there, you even sacrifice your own pay to meet your legislative uh, requirements. That's who it is. All right. Yeah. We were actually on Iboni Halwale. You wanted to weigh in on this particular topic. Oh, yes. I just wanted to agree with the, the senator for Kiambu. I had an opportunity to have a discussion with a member of parliament from Nyeri County when we were fighting the land grabbing uh, in Karen by the Belay uh, operatives. And this young man told me, what's wrong with you? If my name is on that list, what's wrong? You want me to be in parliament, and then I come out, I be poor, my people to say that I am foolish. Uh, so the import of what Omatangia said is that those 400 plus people who are likely to come to parliament have no idea what they are coming to do. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Like this one from Nyeri who thought he was elected to, be, to, to become a rich man in, in, in Nyeri. Coming to my brother and friend, Senator Mutai Kagwe. Kagwe, when I looked at you run uh, uh, on Jubilee, I said, look at him. You have forgotten how you have successfully won your elections. When you won the first time, you went against the grain and won on SDP in a world where... In, in, the NAC, in NAC. In NAC, of course. Yeah, you ran first, for the first time, you ran, you ran as SDP. No, I ran as NAC. As, 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 as NAC. Yeah. Now, when you then won as uh, senator, you did not win as uh, the party of the area. Yeah. You didn't win as TNA. So you have been reminding some people in central province who believe in mob psychology. So long as I'm in a mob which is led by one person who the community re recognizes, then I'm on the right side. You had to be eliminated because you and Kashagwa <laughs> had, had started creating a center of power in central which was away from Uhuru. So people like Wamatangi, Uhuru Kenyatta and others did not want people like Mutahi to make it. You're supposed to get out of the way so that the mob psychology in central province that has made only a handful of families to control the wealth that is rumored in, in Mount Kenya could be perpetuated. Don't give up sticking in there, I wish you could go for independence. I know you would make it because we have to liberate the voter in, in Mount Kenya region who believes that so long as the president or the leader comes from my community, then as his family is comfortable, me, I am also comfortable with my family. We want to stop that narrative.
Well, and you are a very good example. Did you say rumors? First, first, <laughs> first and foremost, you the rumors. First and foremost, that, that's why guys want. First of all, I want I want to disagree with Bonnie. Oh no, who is who is uh, advising me and the you know sort of advising or insinuating things under the guise of advice. Now, <laughs> Bonnie, whereas I agree with you that I think we must get to the point. Where, there are two things. First, I think we must develop political parties. Yes. I think it is important for the future of Kenya that we actually develop political parties. And I agree with Meguna that currently we don't have political parties per se. What we have is political names. And that's it. And, 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 and going forward from there, we must really come to the point where we develop these parties into things that we can identify with or clearly identifiable positions. We must ask ourselves, what is Fort Kenya? What does Fort Kenya stand for? You know, in real terms, in terms of health, in terms of healthcare, in terms of schools, in, what do they stand for in real terms? Right now, there is no difference. Number two is to say this. I think we must also get to the point where parties will interview and nominate individuals in accordance with A, their popularity, and B, whether they believe in what the party believes in or not. Thirdly, and I think this is very important, uh, uh, Bonnie, is to say this. It is true. It is true that there are people who will try and influence areas. You know, we have a political tourist in, uh, in, 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 in Central Province. Mm -hmm. And I speak about Nyeri, for example. Mm -hmm. We have a tourist from another area, you know, of Central Province, who is always masquerading around there as if he controls, you know, the votes of Central Province. The other day he claimed that during the nominations, he had gone around Nyeri 14 times. Why would you go around nearly 14 times? Where do you come from? I mean, you come from somewhere else. So if you come from like Kipia, stick to like Kipia politics, okay? Mm -hmm. Leave nearly politicians alone. So this idea of, a, of an overriding individual, there will be many attempts and there has been many attempts to control regions. But I can tell you, Bonnie, that Nyeri is not controllable by an individual from outside Nyeri. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and, that's, and that's for sure. Oh, let, let's just see what mm -hmm. also you had to say about this particular yes, shambolic. Yes, because this is what you said uh, from uh, your article that uh, I read recently, that uh, what we have witnessed are not free, fair, transparent, credible, and democratic contest, but an indictment of our electoral process. They are. Um, and I gave examples of, uh, let's look at Busia, for example. Uh, my friend Otuma won. There is no way that uh, Ojamong would have beaten Utuoma. Utuoma had, uh, say, for example, strongholds, let's say it's seven constituency vis-a-vis -vis five, five out of seven. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ojamong had only two. And in the two constituencies that Ojamong was strong, mm -hmm. uh, the MPs for those two constituencies are not even ODM MPs. Correct. They're actually Jubilee MPs. So the fact of the matter is this, there are places like CIA where rigging outrightly happened or Homa Bay and then certificates were given to other people. So that's an indictment of the parties uh, because under the current dispensation, uh, popular will of the people should prevail. And in these instances, the popular will of the people uh, was sabotaged. But the more annoying and actually uh, very unfair part of it is this that these fictional constructs in Kenya that are called parties went around and collected nomination fees, quite a huge amount of money, mm. from a lot of people, sometimes 500,000, yeah. a half a million uh, shillings, from probably my yeah. friend uh, Mutai Kagwe. I did pay half a million. And then after you are paying, uh, you're paid half a million, then they tell you only members of these parties will, will participate in the primaries. So they also sell you party cards. In their case, they call them smart, smart cards. cards yes. In ODM, they call them party cards. People then spend huge amounts of money, in fact, millions, mm -hmm. to buy these cards for yeah. their so-called members to distribute. Of course, that should not be happening because members should be buying their own. But in the situation of Kenya where people are very poor and whatnot, so they help uh, their population get these cards. Then somebody gives a direct nomination to an individual without primaries. So that's very bad. But finally, I want to say this. <laughs> I think we have to raise the debate to what kind of leaders we want. 
I believe that, and that is why I've been talking about the media, because I think it is important. The media is the torchlight. It is the spotlight. It is the, uh, it is the only avenue and fora, forum which allows these uh, issues to be ventilated, uh, to be synthesized, and then a fine outcome to get out there. And the media has to play that role. So the media must be asking the question, and people participating in the media like ourselves and professionals must ask this question. What kind of leadership does Kenyans deserve? Not does, do Kenyans want. Do Kenyans deserve? In any society, you need a visionary leader. The people who fought for independence had a vision. Mm -hmm. Then you need a leader with integrity. You need a leader that is not going to be compromised on the basis of money, or, or on the basis of, of uh, relationships, on the basis of external influence, so that the leader projects uh, the public interest and serves it. That is the ideal. So you move towards the ideal. Any properly managed democracy moves towards the ideal. For example, Obama. Obama represents, encapsulated, almost the American ideal. A man who believed strongly on certain principles. He worked consistently on these principles. He was very diligent and disciplined. He was intelligent. He understood the issues. He was capable of articulating them. And then he rose to the top. This society, Kenya, does not allow an Obama to rise. Why? Because everybody believes in the brown envelope. Mm -hmm. Everybody believes on the begging culture that my friend Mutai Kagwe was speaking. And then the media cheers it. And my challenge to the media, and take it positively, mm -hmm. is that your role is not to cheer. You're not supposed to cheer demagogues. <laughs> You're not supposed to cheer rich people. You're not supposed to cheer flamboyant people. You're not supposed to cheer charismatic people. You're supposed to filter and give us leaders of integrity so that when people go to the polls, you are able to put Miguna against Kidero, against Mike Movie Sonko, right. and you're supposed to Thank be you. able to list their qualities so that the people know what they're voting for. But if you just say, oh, no. all right, but no, 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 but yeah, no, 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 just, just a moment. Yes. Yes. I, I think, I think agreed, that's... Agreed to a larger extent, uh, Miguna. But you, you don't see, have to the, agree you know, yes, yes. But, but, but you see, the argument, that, that argument between the leader the people deserve yes. and the will of the people, it's a big debate. No, because, no, no. Because, because, we see, because, because right. you see, you know, I, I want to chime when, in just, just a moment. When you have defined that the leader must come from the will of the people, and then we say that you give the people the leader they deserve according to whose prescription. Wait, wait on who's scale. Because, 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 right. because, because that, that one, that, 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 that one is, is 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 an extremely gray area. What what, what no, it is not. Know, defined defined as deserve because because Vision, when, when, okay. when you go when you right. go down there. All right, all right. just a moment. So sometimes the, the, the lens through which you see the desires and what is deserved by the people. Mm. Yourself sitting here and knowing all the good things and all the things that you've learned. Mm. And those people down there in my villages in, uh, in Kiambu, mm. in Thika, mm. in Roiro, mm. in Ilimuru, mm. they, 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 they are deserve mm. underlined. Mm. is a very different deserve. Uh, right. Let's say from we'll come okay, to you. We'll come to you.